everyone and welcome to the University of Edinburgh Napier MEC Business Management webinar. My name is Helen Spiropoulos and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Global. And uh, joining me this evening all the way from the UK is uh, Dr. Jackie Brody. Good evening to you, Dr. Jackie. Good evening, Helen, and welcome to everyone who's joining us today in such extraordinary times at the end of April 2020. Yeah, absolutely. And as you can see, Dr. Jackie is joining us um, from her home at the moment. I'm also at home at the moment, but, uh, and I'm sure, as Dr. Jackie has said, very unprecedented times. And I'm hoping that everyone that has joined us this evening is actually quite safe and well. Um, how we are going to conduct uh, the webinar this evening is I'm just briefly going to introduce you to uh, Stafford um, and basically the, the functions of Stafford. And I'm then going to hand you over to uh, Dr. Jackie, who's going to talk about the program. At the end of the presentation, you will have the um, ability to type out any questions that you would like to ask me or Dr. Jackie. Um, Dr. Jackie is obviously I'm going to answer questions predominantly pertaining to the academics of the program, and I can also assist with the admissions questions. I am going to be looking at these questions quite carefully because a lot of them are uh, very similar, if not identical, so I will be grouping them together. Okay, so let's get started. Who is Stafford Associates? Well, Stafford was established in 1993 and we are a resource centre for distance learning education in the Middle East as well as in Africa and in Canada. We are currently the resource centre for six UK universities, so we function across four continents. And the mere fact that you are here this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. Um, and our function here at Stafford is to assist you throughout the um, application process, ensure that we send all the correct documents to the university and get that very, very important unconditional offer so you can start your program. Um, we do offer a variety of programs um, that would basically suit your personal and your professional needs. So we do offer certificates, diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, uh, masters, right through until doctorates. Um, we also do offer some academic support and as well as administrative support as well. Okay, so I'm going to hold, um, hand you over now to Dr. Jackie and I'll join you towards the end of the presentation. Over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Helen, for that introduction. Welcome everyone to this webinar where I want to really look beyond our current situation and help you imagine what your future could be like. Um, so what I want to do today is just give you some background, some information regarding the benefits of choosing Edinburgh Napier to support your postgraduate education at this time. Um, I, I aim to explain more about the program in detail and I'm just we'll give you some time at the end to ask me any questions. Really I want to begin talking about myself actually. Um, so I've been at Edinburgh Napier now for well over um, 15 years. Um, I have a PhD and that's in information systems management. And as you can see from my qualifications, quite a lengthy list. Um, I have quite a few degrees, including one in education. And what you realize when you come to Edinburgh Napier for your program is that a lot of other academics have a range of education range of experience that they can fit in and support you with while you're up during your studies. Um, in terms of my own area of specialism, then that's really focused on the management of innovation and also to a lesser extent um, supporting people to be creative. Um, I'm very passionate about that and I, I, I get the opportunity to teach both on the MBA and the MSc students um, innovation. Um, you can see as well from, from, from my listing that I'm actually um, an associate professor in entrepreneurship and also I'm the head of learning and teaching at Edinburgh Napier University. So I love learning as you can as you can tell by my qualifications. And really I think online learning is just this amazing tool that allows us the opportunity to, to talk and communicate and hear other people's mindsets, share each other's culture, share knowledge and 
just do that on a global platform, which is just an amazing thing for our lifetime. Um, online learning allows you to stay at home, st allows you to, to continue to work, progress in your career. Again, fantastic opportunity. And at the same time, you can get this qualification um, from quite an excellent university. And I'm really hoping that you'll take up this opportunity and, and, and come and study with us. Okay. So let me just move on to tell you just a little bit about where we are in the world in terms of where Scotland is, because that might have been your your, your first question. Um, as as you can see in this diagram, Scotland, um, in fact, um, the UK itself is highlighted on the map, but Scotland is the top one third of the map of the UK, and it has nearly six million people. And we have quite a comprehensive um, university system. And students come and they study for four years rather than in England where they only study um, for three years. So we study a lot more in depth in, in Scotland, the topics that we choose to do our degrees in. And although there is 18 other higher educational institutions in Scotland, I think we're really quite unique because we have this real employment focus and this, really translates into um, our student successes. I mean, what we've identified um, on our masters is that students tend to get promoted as they move through their studies. And it's really the wealth of experience and the wealth of knowledge that they are um, gaining as they progress through the program, I think, that's supporting them. And what I would like is that that will be true for you. So here we are, that, that's Scotland, a very green, um, but a very seldomly sunny little country just off continental Europe. Okay, so let me just say a little bit more about actual Scotland and its natural beauty. Um, you may recognise some of the scenery in the, the pictures. Um, and the, the, the top picture, for example, is taken from the Harry Potter um, movies and you might have heard of the mythological creature as well that inhabits um, Scotland's biggest um, lake or loch as we call it which is the Loch Ness Monster and that myth is famous throughout the world and we get a lot of beautiful um, um, sites to show our tourists as they move around Scotland. In fact the rough guide um, guidebooks for people who are who are tourists actually called us the most beautiful country in the world that that's some statement but when you do visit you'll realize that actually that's that's quite true we are a really beautiful country um so as a university um, we're based in Edinburgh and that's the capital of Scotland. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about the actual capital of Scotland on my next slide and you can just see how lovely that is itself. So um, when we look at our Edinburgh, which is our beautiful, vibrant um, city, um, then it's not actually that far from the main capital city in the UK, which is London, only an hour away. So most people who arrive into the UK will land up in London and, and take the hour commute um, by plane to come up and visit us. Um, and we really hope that you will do that when you graduate. Um, so once you're here in Scotland, there will be so much for you to see and to do. We have the beautiful Highlands, which has landmarks that you wouldn't find anywhere else in the UK. And you can um, go on the internet and find out a bit more about that, but really beautiful, really stunning. And places like Orkney and Shetland as well are really worth a visit. Um, Edinburgh itself, though, is a very ancient city. Um, it has a royal mile. At one end, we have the stunning castle that sits on a rock high above the city. And a mile away, we have the Holyrood Palace, which is the Queen, the Queen Elizabeth, um, the UK Queen's um, other home. And she often comes and visits us um, for a couple of months every year. And we know when she's at home because they fly the flag for her. Um, so really a beautiful city. Um, it's been voted one of the best cities actually um, to live in the UK. Um, and it continuously um, receives the accolade from newspapers who like to do surveys about that. It's home to more FTSE 100 tech startup companies than anywhere in the UK outside London. 
We are a thriving financial district here in Scotland. And we have um, an international arts festival as well, which is the largest one in the world. Um, unfortunately, due to the current situation, we're unable to, to run the festival this year. But by the time you graduate, it should be up and running again. And and we'd love you just to come to spend some time around graduation. Graduation happens in July, and obviously um, the festival happens at the end or at, at the beginning of August. So we'd love you to come up and and and, and see that. Okay. So now I've outlined Edinburgh. I've said a little bit about Scotland. I really want to just say a few words about um, Napier and its background. You can see that we started off as this very technically orientated college way back in 1964 and we expanded, we brought different campuses and we expanded our expertise as well to, to what we find of Edinburgh Napier in 2020. Um, a really bustling environment um, known throughout the globe as a university with passion, ambition and innovation, very inclusive environment, um, very innovative and inclusive. We've got 600 international students studying with us and as you can see we have one and a half thousand members of staff and we even have one and a half thousand online students as well. So really impressive statistics about what we've been doing since we started um, way back in 1964. Okay, um, I want to now talk a little bit about um, some of our accolades that we've received and some of the recognition as a university. One of the main ones that we've received is just that we're number one in the UK for nurturing student talent. What one of the our main newspaper did in the UK was compare the entry requirements of students to their final degree award. And they decided that we had added so much extra value that students had done so much better than was expected by the qualifications that they had when they first entered the university. So here we are supporting students to achieve really their best outcomes, which I think is just amazing. And we've been doing that for quite a long time now. So looking further at our achievements on this slide, we have a number of internationally recognized accolades. Um, one is given to us by, by the website Top Universities, looking at um, the five QS stars, and we have that for teaching, employability, and for internationalization. We're also a winner of the, the Queen's Anniversary Prize of 215, and we won that because of our work with businesses utilizing um, timber and um, making sure that everything that we do is sustainable. Um, we are the largest UK provider of, of higher education in Hong Kong, and um, we've had nearly 9,000 Hong Kong students graduate with us. Amazing. We've got about round about 3,000 at the moment um, who are studying with us and they're doing all kinds of degrees um, under the Napier University banner. Um, we also find that, our, that we have 95% of our graduates who are in, in employment. And in fact, when you look at the online programs, that is 100% usually during the survey stage. And that's because most of our students are in employment and they want to progress and have decided that this is the right option for them. So I think, you know, that that's just fantastic. And great news, um, we've now ranked up 500 students or alumni who decided to start up an organisation um, um, following or during their studies with our business incubator. So we really are, as you can see, a university focused on being global, focused on supporting employability, and even if that's um, supporting people setting up their own business. Okay, I now want to say just some a little about our campuses and about the six schools that make up Edinburgh Napier University. Um, as you can see um, from this diagram, we have three different campuses at the university. They're all designed and structured slightly differently. It's Site Hill Campus, for example, which is based far out from the, from the actual city, 
close to the links that allow people to travel around the universities. Here we support mainly health and social care students who are training to be nurses. And many of our, our, of our um, students are currently out on placement at the moment and um, supporting our National Health Service um, during this time. And then we have um, the Merkiston campus, which is nearer the city centre and that houses our wonderful School of Computing, um, a School of Engineering and a School of Arts and Creative Industries. Um, a fairly modern building with lots of amenities, including a massive computer centre for students. And then we turn to Craig Lockhart campus, which kind of has the best of both worlds because we have a, a newer section which um, houses our student learning and our teaching environment. But we have a much older, more prestigious um, part of the campus where um, the faculty are housed. So there you go. That's our um, th um, three different campuses and the schools that they house. OK, want to say something about our students and our range of students in the university. Um, as you can see, we're a fairly large university with over 19,000 students um, from 140 countries. Um, it's almost as if every intake, we get another um, group of students from another country, which is just amazing. And we've had such an influx of students coming to campus as well lately um, to enjoy some of the benefits of, of living in the UK for a couple of years. So um, studying on campus, there's about there's over 13,000 students. And as I said, um, overseas and online, it's more in the region of 6,000, with 1,500 of those students actually studying with us online. And 233 of them are studying on my program. Okay, so now I want to give you some information, moving away from talking about the university as a whole and Scotland, and move on to what we're really here for, which is to think about um, global online and studying um, through the university, your MSc. So global online is really a brand um, that we've developed in a university. And when you enroll on a global online program, you see that logo. And it's a brand that tells you that the, the modules that are offered are going to be flexible. They're going to fit into your studies. They're going to fit into your personal life and your work commitments. And um, so, for example, we don't have any exams um, on Global Online. Instead, you will do um, coursework. And a lot of that coursework comes in at the very end of your studies, giving you the time to, to, to really work out your own plan about how you want to undergo your coursework as you move through um, the trimester at hand. Um, so lots and lots of really lovely features to support you. Um, as well as being 100% online, we have intelligent agents that you can ask questions. So if you find it in your country, we're asleep in the UK, but you still have questions, then you can ask Ben and he will be able to answer you. Um, we really try to have high quality materials that are interactive and allow independent study. And we have three intakes per year. So on campus, it tends to be just January and September, but we allow that May intake, which I just think is just fantastic. Allows people that option of starting early and doing their studies. So it really fits into you personally and professionally. Okay. Um, so I just want to, again, just show you the scale of our global exposure. I won't say too much about this slide, but you can see that we have students in the Americas, we have students throughout Europe, we have students in Africa, we have students in the Middle East, and we have students in Asia and, of course, Australia, Australia, um, Australia and even in New Zealand. So we really are tending to be global. And when we go out to the Caribbean and meet our alumni, um, it's just fantastic. And of course, we've met some of our alumni um, in Europe as well and throughout the world. And we just get some amazing feedback about their experiences. OK, so now I want to drill down a bit more and tell you about the MSc Business Management Programme itself and what it will contain and how it's broken down in terms of its content. So 
if you decide to do the general route of the MSc Business Management, the first module that you'll undertake is Leadership Strategy and Innovation. And I just think this is a fantastic module. It's a module that we're actually um, providing as well to the Scottish Government who want to upskill workers who um, in our country. So it's a module that allows you to look at the different strategies involved in leading innovation and in organisation. So great. Then there's organisational change management and given that a lot of us are facing so many changes at the moment, really, really fast changes, I just think this is just an excellent way um, for us to train up people and support them. Um, in terms of other modules, we have business, economics and finance in a global environment, which is a core module for you and I love how this module allows you to move from the very small um the 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 the, the, the finance of of on the very small and then widen that out to the to the global economic situation so great module good discussions going on there particularly in the current climate creating business excellence and marketing you kind of get the opportunity to look at a balanced scorecard, see some of the key components of an excellent business and really focus in on marketing and how that can support excellence within within your organisation. Obviously, for those doing the general route, you get to do my module, which is managing innovation. We get to explore how to manage innovation in an organisation. What models, what processes do people utilise um, to their advantage? Contemporary issues and strategic management kind of speaks for itself. I think this is, again, a fantastic module that allows you to reflect on models and tools, techniques, again, um, to really support your own organisation. Once you've done your, your, your six top modules, you move on to your search methods module, which allows you to develop a proposal. And that proposal um, you work on with your, your supervisor, who will also supervise your dissertation stage. And then you'll be able to graduate with a full MSc. So just, just to let you know about the exit points, sometimes people decide they only want to do an individual module, and that itself carries an award. But if you decide to carry on and do your postgraduate certificate, you'll do three modules, you'll gain 60 credits, and you'll graduate with a PG cert. Or if you decide to carry on and do all, top six, all six top modules, you'll do the postgrad diploma. And finally, if you do your search methods and your dissertation, which is what most students do on the programme, then you will be awarded the full MSc at graduation time. OK, I um, want to say a little bit about now about the types of specialist routes that you can do. You can see that we've got several on offer. Um, each specialist module is worth 20 credits each. And what happens is you'll have all the you'll have these options. So if you decide not to do just a general route, you could do, for example, the MSc in entrepreneurship, which would allow you to look at um, innovation or new venture planning. So in terms of new venture planning, you would be looking at putting together a business plan. Um, for a business of your own and you could maybe even utilize that as part of um, a unit in your own organization as well so really interesting modules and that would gain you the MSc in entrepreneurship you might decide that you want to study the MSc and events management um, we are leaders in our field in terms of event management as I said earlier we have the largest arts and um, festival in the world so our academics have all been involved in that um, the, the festivals and able to feed that back to you as well and have discussions around that and I noticed that assessments are usually quite topical and taken to to um, take into consideration current events as well which is really good and gives you up-to-date thinking around that area um, you may decide to do our MSc in HRM as well, um, which allows you to think about human resource management very much within an international context. Um, in terms of hospitality and tourism, again, if you are running a hotel, you're involved in a hotel, that would probably be the right module for you to take um, 
um, specialist route for you and support you as you want to move and progress through your organisation into a more managerial role. And MSCIS strategy and governance, um, one of the latest um, specialist routes that we offer, um, this is the, the specialist parts are taught in the School of Computing um, by computing academics and your dissertation will also be supervised by those academics. And in terms of the MSc Logistics and Supply Chain Management and the MSc Project Management, again, both of these allowing you to really to fit into the needs of your organisation and where your organisation needs a skill set. So logistics and supply chains, very important skill set to have. Um, some of our students decide to do the MSc in marketing. And again, that would be great if you've got to manage any marketing functions in your organization or you would like to do that. And you get the opportunity to look at global marketing, for example. Um, we have MSc in banking and finance. And again, they're really suitable specialisms for people who are either in the financial sector or who would like to actually move into that sector. So let me move on then having looked at the specialisms. And I wanted to just say a little bit more about the resources that are available to you when you study with us um, online and what it looks like. So what you'll find is um, that there's three parts to your experience. There is initially the online induction, um, which tells you about the regulations of the university. It'll, and it will also tell you how to be a student then you'll move on to look at your own um, programs program page and that will tell you how to be a student on that particular program and you'll have interactions with other students on your program and you'll be able to have interactions with your program leader there, you'll be able to communicate with them there and then finally you'll move on and you'll do your modules with us and your modules obviously you'll have a module leader, you'll have a tutor that will support you as you as you progress through your studies so three different aspects to the resources um, students are encouraged to study up to two modules per trimester and their studies will include an induction as i said um, you also get enu global online resources and you also uh, uh, including library of course extensive library information and you also get a predetermined weekly surgery session for each of the modules that you take to ensure um, that you're progressing well on your modules. So when you see an online module, what does it consist of? Well, it has quite a standard look. And what you'll find is the first unit is just an overview, a short video, a welcome from the module leader, an explanation about what the module is going to be like and what kind of learning outcomes you can expect to achieve by the end of the module. Then you'll experience 10 specific subjects units and these will all break down into um, the learning outcomes for each of the units, um, the reading for each of the units, the assessment questions, reflective exercises, you'll have summaries, you'll have the end of unit progress tests and you'll also have further reading. So quite comprehensive breakdown there. On your modules as well, you'll have discussion topics, you'll have case studies with solutions, and you'll also have assessments available from the very start of the trimester so you can get started on them as soon as you would like to and ask questions of your module leader as soon as you want to. There's also outline solutions of sample assessments, and as I said, these weekly WebEx virtual office hours that will really help you academic live sessions. The calendar of your studies looks like this. It's broken into three trimesters. So if you were to start in January, for example, then you would study two modules then. In the trimester two, you would move on in May to August, study another um, two modules. And then in trimester three, you would study your final um, top modules. And then you'd move on to look at your research methods and your dissertation. Your dissertation can actually span two um, trimesters if you decide you want to do that because you are registered as a part-time student. Um, but some people do decide to do it in just one semester and it's really up to the individual. Um, you'll find that assessments are due either in week 13 or week 14 um, depending on the semester. Wanted to say something about the online virtual support. As I said, these are live 
academic help sessions and they run throughout the whole of your program and obviously your program leader will be on at the start and they will come on throughout the session also to support you but your main focus will be on your modules and the support that's given to you by both your module leader and by your global online tutor um so let's have a look at the way that modules look like on the actual program so here is my module um, a screenshot of it. I think it's important to flag up that we have an Edinburgh clock that allows you to know what time it is in Edinburgh and, and understand why we're maybe not responding or it will allow you to send an email at a reasonable time so that the academic can reply as quickly as possible. Um, in terms of a video as well, we have introductory videos on all the modules and you can see some other um, key areas here um, indicating online videos and um, assignments and workbooks. Um, each week is really a bite-sized piece of learning. You can take your time, you can spread more than just one week, but it is written as if you will take that week um, to do your, your coursework. Um, there will be introductory videos, reading, progress tests, and lots of self-assessments as you move through the program. As, man as mentioned earlier, there's academic discussion forums, there's student chat forums, there's weekly WebEx sessions, and there's even transcripts or videos of those sessions available to you if you don't manage to make it along for those weekly sessions. The workbooks, I think, are just a great tool to capture your thinking about organisations and get you thinking about how you might be able to apply that to your own organisation. So that's the workbooks. In terms of roles that support you within um, the global online experience, as I said before, there's a module leader, there's online tutors. They're going to provide the academic leadership, the academic support on the module. The global online support team, um, a dedicated non-academic support team who monitor your progress on the modules, contact you if you've been inactive, and really are a tool to, to support you pastorally. So you will direct any academic queries to the module leader or the tutors. Sometimes they're directed to me, but I always direct them back to the relevant module tutor. Um, in terms of university policy, um, you'll be given a university email and you can use that to contact Global Online and they can use that um, email to look up all your information and make sure you get the correct response from them. Okay, so we're kind of coming now to the end of my presentation. I want to say now just a little bit about um, the entry requirements on the, on the programme. We typically are looking for a bachelor's honours degree at what we class as an upper second. Um, but we're really looking for applicants who have any background in any subject discipline. So I've seen um, students who have had healthcare backgrounds. I've seen medical doctors even do this degree so i've had a whole variety of people with different backgrounds not necessarily having a management background or a, or a business background but would like to move into that area and as long as you've got the right level of degree we will will obviously let you in we may consider lesser qualifications and um, if you have sufficient professional work experience but what i would say about that is always speak to your stafford and consultant about this and, 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 and really lay out all your experience in quite a lot of detail um, because um, it, it, it's, we have to adhere to the university quality systems and letting people on the programme. So the, as much detail as you can provide to Stafford would be fantastic. Again, English language, if it's not um, your first language, you may have to take a test. But again, Stafford can advise. So coming towards the end of the presentation i want to share with you and and, and give you a positive um, ex, um positive understanding of of our students and where the what they've enjoyed about their learning online um the first one is this is from my own module managing innovation it's taken from a few years ago but every year i get very similar feedback and and i just love some of the statements that have been said so here's one here i'm pressed with the nu and our teaching supporting staff for bringing the classroom to my living room and um, they've thanked us for the excellent support and the learning materials and if i can just draw your attention to 
um, feedback that I that I, I was given at the very end, which is from an airline pilot who had had limited exposure in the business environment, who was truly grateful for all the guidance that I gave um, on the forums and my personal efforts till the very last day when he submitted to ensure we gave the best. So we really do try and give you a first class service in terms of your learning experience. And that's why I'd be really keen for you to join us. And also, I want to flag up that Stafford have an amazing grant for everyone of a thousand American dollars. And um, if you want to just contact them about that, they can give you a bit more information about that. And in terms of the next application deadline, Stafford, again, will be able to let you know about that as well. OK, so I'm quite happy right now to take any sort of questions from you about the programme. Um, but I'm going to now hand you back to Helen. Thank you so much, Helen. And over to you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Jackie. That was very, very informative. Thank and you, Helen. Uh, I have actually seen quite a lot of questions that have been coming through quite fast and furiously. So ah, I'm going to start <laughs> um, putting them all together again. Okay. Excellent. Um, um, I have uh, noticed uh, from my uh, academic consultant at Stafford that um, the business school is going to go under ACSB accreditation. Uh -huh. Does that mean that your MSc program will also be accredited? Yes, I mean, we're still in very early stages. So it'll be a couple of years before we gain that accolade, but we are collecting all the information that we need we're getting all the guidance that we need and so in a few years time yes um what um the whole of the business school will be accredited by acsb so yes okay. the degree will come under that because it's in the business school fantastic and then and just a follow-up question to that is when do you expect this to actually occur it's a very slow process. I can't make any promises at the moment. Um, we it will take at least two or two years, three years to actually gain the accolade because we've it's it it's it's a real badge. Um, it's a real stamp of an excellent institution, and we have to really provide that evidence, and we have to collect data, and we have to collect assurance of learning from our students over a couple of years. So we've started that process, but it, but we still got a few years to go. Okay, and I've noticed that you've got quite a, an impressive um, a selection of um, specialisations. Can you please mm. let me know if you're going to get any more specialisations to your portfolio? I'm not planning to have any more specialisms at the moment. Um, I think um, the, the ones that I've got, the, 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 the 10 that I've got at the moment, 10 or 11 I've got at the moment, um, is, is what the marketplace um, has, has shown an interest in. So I'm not planning on any more specialisms, but I think they cover all the key areas um, that, that people have, have asked about. But if you've got a suggestion, then pass it on to Stafford and they can always pass that on to the university because it is a relationship that we have with Stafford and they can make suggestions to us. And we have actually um, brought on, you know, different um, ideas from what they've suggested. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, obviously there is a, a bit of a lockdown now with COVID um, and I would have loved to actually come and visit you and your team on the campus. Oh. Um, if I mm -hmm. cannot get hold of you face to face, how am I going to get hold of tutors via my Moodle platform? Yeah, remember, everyone is global and I showed you the diagram. So it doesn't matter if you never, ever come to campus. I've had, you know, a, <laughs> hundreds of people graduate so far who've never I went on campus. I think what I was trying to share was that I love it when you do come to campus. If you can get a visa to come visit us, I'd love you to come and visit me. Um, just let me know in advance. I'll show you around the campus. I'll let you meet the librarian. Um, yeah, I'm happy to do that. So doesn't matter if it doesn't happen, but I'd love to see you guys. What would happen if I fell an assignment? Um, do I get any critical review? I'd like to know where I went wrong. Yes, yeah, so um, 
when you, when you do an assignment, you'll be given quite extensive feedback. And if you don't understand that um, that feedback, then by all means, please follow up with the tutors who mark your work and get their support. I know that I also personally look at drafts of people who are resubmitting. Um, um, but that not all academics will do that. But I try and provide that service because I think that really helps them support you and improve your work. And um, most of those students go on and be successful. Don't be worried about failing, particularly your very first module, because I understand it can be quite a jump um, from undergraduate studies to postgraduate studies. We're here to support you. Absolutely. And how are assignments uh, graded? Uh, do you have percentages or is it actually um, an ABC type of grading? Yes, yeah, so it's like at the moment um, for the foreseeable future and um, it will be ABC grading. The university is looking towards moving towards percentages. That will take us another year before we're able, obviously, to implement that. But at the moment, it's on a um, grading system that's um, an F for a fail, um, up to a P for a pass, and then it's and then it moves to a distinction, and then you you rise up. So there's a 16 point scale in, in total, with the first scale being non-submission. Okay, and uh, uh, Thompson actually has a question, which is it's quite interesting, especially in these times. Um, do you actually have any virtual lectures? Um, that actually occur on this program or um, are these actually recorded so I do have the opportunity to uh, look at them at my own leisure. So what you'll find is each unit has a video which will tell you the key points of, of um, the unit that you're learning. Um, and then some academics as well, because they record their lectures on campus, may also give you a much longer on campus um, lecture. But it's not the norm, but we are moving towards that. We understand that some people prefer to learn that way. Other people prefer to think for themselves, engage on discussion forums, chat with other students. So there's different mechanisms by which you can learn on the program. It's whatever really suits you. What would happen if I miss the induction? Is this an important part of my program? The induction you can do at any time, but it's much preferred to do it at the start. Remember the purpose of an induction is really to support you to become a student, to learn about what it's going to be like to be an Edinburgh Napier student, to learn the regulations and um, the academic integrity that we expect you to uphold as you carry on through the programme. So that's why I would advise you to do it right at the start. It can be a bit overwhelming, but it will actually support you when you actually move on to your, your modules. It will only take you a few, day, a few, a few days at maximum to do. Good, and uh, you have mentioned that there are no examinations, uh, but why is this so? I do know that there are other MECs out there that are very traditional and have examinations. Why does your MEC not have examinations? And the reason why we decided not to have examinations was we originally had examinations. We found that these were unfair, though, to our students. Given the global reach, we had students who were do, who were starting the exam at 8 o'clock in the morning and others starting at 9 o'clock at night. So basically, we decided it wasn't beneficial for students because of the starting time, but also because of the underlying belief. And we actually, um, for the most part on campus, have this belief that an MSc is not about rote learning it's not about learning facts it's about thinking and when you have a piece of coursework you have a period of time to really think about that question and then work on an answer and I think you will find that that's beneficial as you progress through. Okay and uh, I do have a postgraduate diploma from another university um, will I be able to get credits uh, towards your MEC? What you need to do is you need to send that in to your Stafford agent. They will have a look at that. They'll forward that to the admissions. If admissions have any concerns, they'll speak to me. And then you may or you may not be given um, allowances for your previous modules. But the learning outcomes of those modules have to really quite closely match um, what you are learning. 
Absolutely. And and Dr. Jackie is actually quite correct. When you are going to send these documents to your Stafford consultant, please ensure that you do attach your learning outcomes of the modules that you have currently completed. It will make admissions and Dr. Jackie's job a lot easier to be able to match yep. um, the modules. Okay, so just Precisely. bear that in mind. Okay. Um, oh, a very common question. Um, is distance learning mentioned on my degree certificate? This is something that my employer would not want. So this is just to assure you that it, does, it appears nowhere on your certificate, that you will be standing next to someone who studied on campus usually when you're graduating. So you will just graduate with them and you will pick up your certificate at exactly the same time. So there is no mention anywhere that it was online. Okay, and how many graduations do you have uh, per year? So we have the two graduations per year, we have one that takes place at the early July and we have one um, later, usually in October. Okay, and uh, well a follow up question to that, in the event that um, COVID is still around um, and I cannot graduate, well, how do I get my certificate if I cannot attend the graduation? Yes, so unfortunately this year there will be no graduation ceremony because of the situation we find ourselves in. What we're going to do is all students will graduate in abstentia. That will not be a cost to them. Their certificate will be sent out. You just have to make sure that you fill in the correct form, so to say that you are graduating. Sometimes people defer until a point where they can actually come on campus and they can actually graduate in person. And we often see that with online students. They wait at least least till the following uh, opportunity to graduate so they can come with our whole families. Good and if I do not have an undergraduate degree how many years working experience would I need in order to do your program? Yes yeah, so I think it would be have to be quite extensive and admissions would look at each of your working experience because some of it again might not be considered at the right level um, so it's really a discussion and debate um, between myself, admissions and your Stafford consultant will have a lot of guidance on that as well. So the first people to talk to would be Helen. Absolutely, absolutely and Dr is quite correct. Do get in touch with your personal academic consultant yeah. and we'll be able to guide you um, as to what the university is actually looking for. Okay. Um, do I have to do an IELTS exam? As you well know, all IELTS centres are now closed. Um, so how do I actually provide evidence of English proficiency? Yes, yeah, so again, I would speak to your Stafford consultant about what's possible for you. I don't know what is possible where you're based, so you need to get a bit more guidance from Stafford on that. Absolutely, and Dr. Jack is quite correct. We do look at a lot of uh, factors. Uh, we'll also look and see if your degree has been undertaken um, in an English medium. Um, there's a lot of mm -hmm. factors that we take into there consideration. Is, there is. Um, so do definitely get in touch with us and, and we can actually assist you with that. Um, if I need to actually extend my studies, how long do I have to complete this program? The maximum length of time is usually considered four years. You'll go on, so you could go and suspend the studies for maybe one or two years, but you'd have to organise that in conjunction with your programme leader and your support team. We're always there, we're always ready to support you, but currently that is the academic regulations as they stand. Okay, and I have been told that I can actually do two modules per trimester. In your opinion, Dr. Jackie, is this advisable? Um, lots of people do two modules per semester. You just have to be prepared. You just have to understand what a module means. A module means 200 hours of learning. So you have to think, do I have within this trimester the ability to do 400 hours of learning to really give it the best and get the best result from it so that you can use the skills, the techniques, the knowledge in your own workplace. So it's, it has to fall back down to you and your own current situation, your family life, your work life, etc. 
Absolutely. Um, do get in touch again with us at Stafford and we'll be able to guide you as well and give you, um, you know, some guidance on, on how many hours per week you should be studying. Um, and uh, we'll be able to, to advise you on that accordingly. Um, what is the pass mark if I happen to fail an assignment? Do I get the class average? No, when you, when you fail your, your, your assignment, you're allowed to resubmit, but it will be capped, and it's capped at the lowest pass mark there is, which is considered a P1. So when you resubmit, it will be a P1. Can we have one last um, uh, question? Um, I have noticed that there's quite a lot of specialisations. Um, mm. Can I start with one specialisation and then move on to another one if I change my mind halfway through the programme? You can, but then what I would advise you to do is start off with the compulsory modules first and then change. Because if you start off with your specialisms first and then try and change, sometimes you wouldn't get the credit. Well, you won't get the credit for a module if you're moving from HRM to marketing. So I would always start off with something like leadership, strategy and innovation. Really good modules to start on. Or organisational change management. These modules run every trimester. Good, fantastic. Okay, so I have managed to actually group all the questions uh, together. Fantastic. Thank you very much, everyone, for very informative questions there. Um, as Dr. Jackie said, we are currently accepting applications for the May intake. The program will start on the 18th of May. Your application deadline's on the 8th of May. So you really do have some time still to send your application yeah, through. Good. Really want to catch this uh, this May intake, um, and uh, we do have quite a lot of students that have applied for this program. Very very popular program. So do get your application documents in as soon as possible, so we can get that very important unconditional offer. Again, Dr. Jackie, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you, especially being at home, and to everyone that has joined us. Thank you so much, and I do hope that you're all well and safe. And chat to you again. Wishing you all the best, everyone, and good luck. And I hope to see you on the program soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.